What's up, guys? Welcome to Soul Status After Dark. Today we have a very special episode. Today we are sitting here with Chuck and Matt. Chuck's kicks on Instagram and Coaster kicks on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Welcome, guys. Yeah, guys. Thanks, Welcome. Thanks for having, Thanks for having, having us. us. Yeah. Welcome to, to be here. After hours over here at Ooh. Soul Status. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a different feel here after closing time. It's kind of yeah. chill. Yeah. Laid back. It's quiet. <laughs> yeah. So. How are you guys? And uh, tell me a little bit about like what you do for the people that don't know. Sure. So we have very different business styles, but I usually just like I get a bunch of shoes for retail and I sell them to people like for resale price. I sell a lot to go. Um, I also deal in Supreme, Lego, sometimes PS5s, pretty much anything that can make me money. I pretty much buy and then put it up. I also deal in stocks, so uh, mainly shoes, but a lot of just general items that can make me money okay so sure. not just sneakers yeah no not just sneakers but okay. sneakers are the main focus for sure okay mm -hmm. see i mainly do bulk and used and new like i like buying bulk pairs because the thing is the more pairs i buy the less i'll get off i'm also really into mystery boxes because mm. i've bought in probably 20 plus mystery boxes in my really? less than two years of selling shoes. most expensive mystery box i think it was 4k whoa okay we're getting Damn. up there yeah yeah, I've been watching some of your videos that you've been doing on some of the mystery box. And I, honestly, I find it interesting to sort of watch other people do. It's not something that I might necessarily do because I'm kind of a control freak. I like to control what I'm buying. I'm the same way. <laughs> but I do. I, it is interesting to watch you sort of go through um, being surprised over something that you purchased. Like you don't know what you purchased. You go in blind. You give them sort of a criteria of what you're looking for in terms of uh, yeah. ROI and usually I do mainly <laughs> shoes, but if I throw in DS clothing, I'm okay with that because I cause I feel like people will buy shoes more for personal than clothes because you have less shoes in your collection than shirts usually. Sure, and shoes there's an it's easier. I would say that it's easier to liquidate because of platforms like StockX and Go, mm -hmm. whereas clothing, mm -hmm. they're a little bit more particular about how it needs to be packaged and mm -hmm. the volume isn't as crazy as it is with like newer releases. See, like I mainly sell my used stuff on Instagram and Snapchat and just like I have a lot of kind of like a good array of personal buyers that will tell me. I do a lot of like sourcing also like people tell me what pairs they want mm -hmm. and I say give me two weeks and then by that two week time I'll have a pair usually and then all my DS stuff I sell on GOAT as I've probably sold like 40 pairs since Thanksgiving on GOAT that's all new yeah, he does a lot okay. of Instagram stuff too that's yeah. pretty cool yeah I see you're pretty active you're definitely the more active one on social um, you're on social yeah in, I, uh, I literally just got into the social media game. I was really just selling a lot on Goat and StockX and eBay, especially now with like zero seller fees on eBay. So I was mainly just selling DS a lot. And then he really got me into like the whole Instagram thing. So I'm like, oh, there's probably actually some money to be made here. And so I'm I'm still pretty new on social media and stuff, but like trying to make a name for myself. All yeah. Right. So tell I mean, me, how do you guys meet then? Uh, we were in the same microeconomics class at BGSU. It okay. was shout out BGSU. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are both <laughs> students. You're yeah. obviously uh, resellers, but mm -hmm. you're sort of like, let's say, newer to the resale game. When when did you guys start reselling? And touch on maybe like why you started reselling. Was it because of? I mean, I know when I was in college, I was a broke student, so like, yeah. I needed to make a little extra money to be able to afford, mm -hmm. you know, like nice clothes, going to parties, having beer yeah. money or whatever. Like, yeah. You know, give um, us a little bit of background. I started out selling Supreme because I had, I was really big in Supreme my junior year of high school and then I kind of phased out of that and then I was like oh sneakers are kind of cool and then I saw the uh, the Travis Scott Jordan ones online uh, and I was like holy crap these are awesome and like these are going to go for crazy numbers so I was like wow maybe shoes might have some and some sort of market so the Travis one is what started it yeah the you. Travis Scott the Scott, Travis Scott one started everything and, and you're, and you're I'm, wearing I'm, I'm them rocking now. them yeah <laughs> yeah I'm wearing them right grilled. now got yeah I got grilled. the grails and so that it's really what sparked my interest. And then I just kept checking sneakers. I'm like, okay, what's coming out? What's coming out? And then the Shattered Backboard 3.0 Jordan 1s were the first shoe that like I actually really sold. I think I got three pairs of them. I got a size, like two size 13s and then a 10. Still and I hit all of them for retail and I was so hyped. And so I sold two and then held one. And my, and my dad was like, what are you doing? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like shoes, <laughs> like you bought, like why would anyone buy it for more than it is? And like it took some convincing to try to get him to agree with it. But then now, like a year and a half later, 
Uh, He's on board now. Yeah, he he loves it. Yeah. He, what about you, Chuck? <laughs> uh, I had to, I used to have a lot of personals, so oh, I where I you started. I started like February of 2019, so oh, okay. about almost two years coming up. Do you Good. remember like a particular drop that was kind of the one for you? It was just I had a lot of. I used to have like so many ultra boot i ultra boots were the shoe that i used to i started out selling because, those were big a couple years yeah, back because i had so many pairs and there's just pairs i wouldn't wear I, and then but the first shoe i ever sold was a charlotte 10 i got from an outlet really? <laughs> i got a pair and i wore it for a little bit and then my buddy wanted them so i was like well let me see and then i like charged like 20 dollars extra for what i paid and i ended up selling them that's pretty how nice it starts. that's how it yeah. starts so the reason why i probably sold shoes because uh, i bought like just to fuel my life, I guess. Cause I shoes I pays for part of my college, and then shoes pays for like my everyday necessities, and like I bought a car with some with my shoe money. Like it's just a lot of stuff. Like is intertwined with sneakers. Impressive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I know a lot of people sort of have like uh, an idea of like what a reseller is or who a reseller is, and sometimes people don't have like let's say the best idea of what that actually looks like because i think it's mostly people in positions that are similar to your guys is where it starts out of like almost necessity but it's it's also like a fun way to earn some extra cash where Mm -hmm. you don't have to like you guys still have uh class schedules Mm -hmm. that you in reselling you can kind of work around them because you can sell in your free time you know you're getting started in the bot game and you can set up bots Mm -hmm. and and those things can be done you know remotely um yeah but also like a lot of uh social media has kind of become the platform where people do a lot of buying and selling so Mm -hmm. like i know you guys have your your social media accounts and that's been a great way for you to sell but maybe talk a little bit about how that's helped you buy. So I started out just like uh, doing shoes because I didn't have much time for a, like a regular job or like going to school was crazy. And so I just kind of started out like that because I was like, well, see what can make me some more money. But as for social media, like just there's a lot of people on there. There's like crap ton of resellers on there that's like trying to make a big quick buck and stuff and so they're like they're pretty flexible on prices so i just go on there look at that and just like oh someone got a good price i'll message them and see if i can get a good offer and stuff like that and then just a lot of retail buying is what i do too but he does a lot of instagram stuff yeah, for sure. yeah. Mo- most of my pairs come from instagram just because i have such a like i have a decent following on instagram and one thing they go by legitness is refs mm-hmm. now i think i'm hitting 300 soon i'm at like two, 275 280 right now and refs so, are so important yeah a lot of people so go with that and the thing is i'll buy like i'll text someone like the other day i texted someone from toledo and they like 10 i think it was like eight pairs and and I said, what do you want for all of them? And I think these little, like these smaller accounts, just get kind of surprised that I would want to buy all their shoes. And when they see numbers, they're like, well, this dude's really mean in business. Let me see what I can do for him. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's just nice because the more bulk I buy, the better deals I get, and the more connections I get. And then I'll keep mm-hmm. going back and forth. Yeah, hundred percent. No offense. I mean, you look all pretty young. So when you say, hey, let me buy out your two, three thousand dollar for whatever, however much it's your a sneaker sus. collection. Yeah. A little <laughs> sus. Yeah, a little like, sus. Yeah. What are you gonna PayPal me? What are you, yeah. are you gonna give me cash? What are you thinking about doing? So uh, I mean you both look like, you know I'm eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But uh no, it's it's impressive to see you guys at this age already, like I said, buying out sneaker collections yeah. from these older cats. So yeah, I mean, it's fun. Make brings in money. Yeah. Love to do it. I mean, I'm a big sneakerhead, so that's another reason why I like doing it cuz it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh there are plenty of sneakerheads in the BG area. There are. Um there's only what one or two shops in the area? There's a very small shop at the back of a barber shop. Uh shout out Sard by the way, but um yeah, he just opened up like what like a Two month ago, ago? yeah Max. yeah but before then it, there was like nothing really there like i mean like people wear a lot of like retro jordans from like 2013 14 and then there's a lot of vans and there's a lot of a Yeezys. Yeezys. There's Yeezys a lot are of Yeezys. huge like 350s like blue tints and like the black ones are huge in bg um but yeah it's, it's a very diff it's a very interesting culture there's not like a lot of like hype stuff like travis scott's or anything like that it's like kind of low-key but yeah, it's cool. The well, you got to figure a lot of the students are still um, college students. College yeah. students. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, you know, I mean, I remember in college, I ate a lot of ramen. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there wasn't a lot of uh, discretionary funds to be spent on luxuries like 
five hundred dollar sneakers. Mm-hmm. So I'm yeah. sure that those people that do exist in BG, but I mean, mm-hmm. now with Yeezy overproducing a lot of the shoes, it seems like that's pretty low yeah. barrier to entry. I mean, you can a lot of times hit for retail or maybe yeah. like two fifty, three hundred. That seems pretty reasonable. So it would make sense why people would wear those. Obviously, Vans, like $40, $50 yeah. shoes. Those, those are, are super yeah. approachable. There's a lot of skaters at BG because it's a pretty flat campus. So people yeah. just skate or scoot or bike to class. So there's a lot of Vans. I haven't seen a lot of SPs. but What do you a see a lot of, Chuck? Uh, I see a lot. I like. I always have an eye out. I see a lot of retros. Like I've bought mm-hmm. a couple of pairs off people's feet while they're walking around campus. That's hilarious. <laughs> so would you consider BG pretty fly then? I mean, people I would know say, the shoes. Mm-hmm. I would say Kinda. it wouldn't be like barren, like the desert, but like there's people that definitely have shoes. Like I've yeah. definitely bought probably 10 or 15 pairs off students at Bowling Green just for off their mm-hmm. feet or they'll hear by word of mouth that I'm a reseller. Yeah. And then one thing actually, we have a Facebook group for our class of 2024 and someone, uh, some dude I already bought shoes off of texted any shoe plugs mm-hmm. on campus and I have four different people put mm-hmm. my ad in the description. Nice. So it's nice. a lot of people like that. So we need to step up the shoe game out there in BG. Yeah. Check these guys out if you do yeah. need some kicks. Uh, maybe, I don't know, hit up some teachers, yeah. man. Those teachers <laughs> seem like they need some kicks yeah. too. There's a lot of forces too, like Air Force One. Well, that's yeah. like an uh, huge. Yeah, there's actually a few customizers, like BG students that like customize Air Force Ones, like that's paint cool. like butterflies and stuff. I, I just followed a girl, I don't remember her name, but uh, she just came to BG and she's a big customizer. I can think of like three or four. So I know you guys have slightly different models in terms of like how you sell yeah. what you're looking for in terms of profit whether you're a holder or you're looking more mm-hmm. towards volume um maybe tell us a little bit about like how you're you know what what are your selling strategies and like how do you do with those with those strategies mm-hmm. well what i usually do is i like use mainly because the margins are bigger than ds like i'll buy a ds pair to flip like ds my margins aren't as high because i'm like well, I can sell on Go and get 350 so let me offer three. So my margins aren't as high as used. But the thing is with used, you can, you can always put in some work. So like one little crep wipe will make a shoe from 8 out of 10 to 9 out of 10 and just has dirt. And my used margins is insane because I buy so much bulk used that the comparison between my uh, margins for new is just like, it's like why would I buy new shoes if my bulk for uh you shoes is just so insane how much money I can yeah. profit off a single shoe. Like I'm making one shoe I've like consistently I've been making 80, 70, 80 dollars off a single shoe because it's used and I'll buy it in bulk and then I'll clean it up, show, give it some attention and some love and then sell for someone who wants to wear them. So used to be better if you're willing to put in some sweat equity, clean them up, relist them. And obviously it, it looks like a value to the customer because maybe let's say a shoe that goes for new like 500 bucks and you might sell it for like 300 used um and if you clean it up and they look good then that would seem like you know a good deal save a mm-hmm. couple hundred bucks wear a nice shoe and okay. yeah and really cleaning shoes aren't as tough as like it's out to be especially so like yesterday i cleaned probably like five pairs and took me like 30 minutes because i would do the same routine i would take mm-hmm. soap and water do that hit all the bottom hit all the bottom one. and then i would take acetone and wipe the bottom to get all the stains out and i'd pick out all the rocks and dirt and then i'd re-clean it and then be mm-hmm. i just use crap protect but he has a lot more involved process than i do so you yeah. use some household goods you got some you know your i use that uh, your tools and whatnot. warm water uh sh- rejuvenator brush mm-hmm. there yeah. we go warm shout out rejuvenator there we go. A, uh, <laughs> dish soap and then like I use a laundry detergent. Okay, yeah. a little bit of laundry time. detergent, especially with the uppers, helps clean them a lot better. Especially mm-hmm. if you put them in the washer. I turned some brown Yeezys back to cream. Yeah, you can put some Yeezys in the wash. But if my yeah. stuff smells like Dawn after mm-hmm. I buy it from you, Chuck, I'm yeah. gonna be mad. My, my pair of static 350s I've beaten to the ground, and they're brown. Yeah, yeah it's using Dawn on on a Yeezy yeah. fabric materials actually not bad. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about like how your model differs from oh, Chuck's? Oh yeah, and- sure. We have very different <laughs> yeah. strategies. So I really just buy like I'd say like ninety percent DS, just okay, almost all DS, and that could be for retail, like Foot Locker and Nike sneakers, or that could just be bulk buying. I'm pretty much DS. Like I do do I do use 
used shoes because they also make a lot of money like he said but mm-hmm. like de just has like up. a formula and there's like an actual set price there is. and like used to like fluctuate so much so do you hold or do you quick oh yeah flip? i you're the whole little bit of both a little bit okay. of both so like jordan ones i hold for like six months to a year i have a lot of mochas right now that i'm currently holding right. and we'll i yeah I, I, I held a bunch of royal toes and i'm holding a few court purples okay. but yeah it's mainly just like hold for like six months to a year and then sell them like uh, one of my one of the one know, of the people shit. that got me into shoes was sneaker invest on youtube and so like what he does on youtube is just like kind of what i've been doing and so okay. like just buying in bulk and then selling holding it and selling it but a lot of it's just like like look at sneakers okay there's this shoe coming out log into my 10 different sneakers accounts with proxies and stuff and then see if i can get it i mean like there's some shoes like the street hawkers that i just copped that like got lucky made a crap ton of money yeah <laughs> and so Annoying. yeah and so if i just keep hitting for retail and then like he's like moose said i'm getting into botting uh very beginner botter but like just like just buying a bunch of ds and then just Holding it or selling it immediately is pretty much so. What Chuck, I do. you how long is a shoe? How, how long will you hold a shoe for? Okay, the only I've held ten shoes, probably less than ten, and they were like the Zoom Racer was actually a good hold because I got like five pairs for uh, yeah. DS, and then the Dior's came the uh, Dior got leaked, so I was like, you know yeah. what? I have a little bit of capital left. I can probably still flip some shoes good. So I held a couple of those, and right when they th- I paid like two hundred a pair right when they came out, and then. When 300 came, I just dropped them all. I said, like, one pair. And then I have a pair of mochas I have sitting on right now because I left. I accidentally left them in my house, and they're dead stock. So I forgot about them. That's, an, that's one pair. And then, like, I don't like holding because I feel I can make as much money as people that hold shoes per shoe by the time they sell them. So, like, people usually take, like, six months. But I can sell in that six months. I can sell, take one shoe and buy another shoe and do, like, repeatedly 10 20 times yeah. so this two and, completely different strategies yeah, that's and what I'm, I'm trying to get into see, yeah, so i'll make 30 like i can make 30 dollars per one shoe but i can do it like 10 15 times in the six month period that you might take the whole yeah i think like both of the models are valid and they work but depending on like obviously what is the capital that you have available to yeah. you do you know offhand like what your average uh buy cost is on the mochas yeah well like maybe a month after they first came out i was buying each pair for like 320 340 but nowadays i've been like upwards of like 375 4 around there okay but yeah they've, they've gone up there was a big christmas rush and so that made them go up big time and but like right when they came out i was really just paying like 320 340 because i mean they didn't go down to 280 like at all hey yeah. my personal pair i got for 300 yeah. shout out alex yeah, yeah. one of my person mm-hmm. one of my people from home got them off sneakers mm-hmm. and i was he said i'll sell them for 300 for your birthday i yeah. was like I got to take that. I yeah, want to know. And I mean, like, for me, like, I'm starting out, I'm just starting out on Instagram. So people are like, well, I don't know yeah. about you. And like, plus, like, I'm not afraid to like spend like 20 extra bucks to establish a relationship with someone. Yeah. Like, I can think of like five people off the top of my head that I bought mochas from that I've, that probably wouldn't have bought from me if we didn't do that price. And now I have an established relationship See, with them. That's good. So, like, yeah, it's all about connections, especially yeah, on social media. Good all about connections and so you have like i mean that's what like refs are so important because like you got to have a good reputation and like connections are a couple of your mochas was because a kid didn't trust you yeah yeah i knew that he he he, he middleman the dude for a a deal yeah he middleman me because like (laughs) i i've dealt with some scammers that's one thing about social media that like social media reselling that is just so like chaotic is just the amount of scammers that are on yeah, there 100%, they're yeah they're out there yeah like i mean i i bought like a pair of like used shoes off of someone who had like eight thousand followers and like 400 reps and i still got scammed so wow. uh, yeah and so it was just thankfully they got their account deleted but like still it's just like it's kind of hard to know who to trust so that's why you got to have like connections and like stuff like that and like actually legit refs because do you guys go to sneaker shows at all well i know corona really yeah put a damper on a lot of uh, stuff. i uh, went to the one in indianapolis okay. uh i think it's called sneaker culture yeah i went and got a table with my buddies from dayton and we brought like 140 pairs oh nice yeah. guys okay like it like i feel it was more seller oriented because people were more excited to like get a show sell pairs yep yeah but i think hopefully now on like I think sneaker Cleveland, sneaker con Cleveland's coming. That's mm-hmm. going to be hopefully that'll be a good show. And like, so sad I can't go. <laughs> they might delay it. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Maybe. It, so yeah. I don't hope so. And I, the one thing I like is the smaller events because I can just go and not even bring a table and just try to buy mm-hmm. as many pairs as I can while yeah. I'm at the event. What do you think about sneaker con being different than the smaller events then for you and your perspective? Uh, 
I personally am not a big fan of buying at SneakerCon, but if I would if I got a table, I'd be totally okay with mm-hmm. it because the thing is with SneakerCon, it charges more for a table, so people charge more on their shoes, and mm-hmm. it's just a yeah. uh, so it's harder to buy. Yeah. yeah, sort of inflates the upfront cost of being there. Yeah, and the one thing I like more about shows is that the shoes are like you have them in hand, you can look at them. Like the one thing about Instagram buying that I like. I kind of like don't like is the whole waiting for the shoes to come in because like right now I probably have like twenty pairs and you sitting in, in transit in Toledo right now. Oh, wait for StockX or go off just Instagram sellers. Oh really? Yeah, I buy a lot off Instagram. Yes. So like that's why I like coming to shows because or coming to shows and to stores. Like I come in here mm-hmm. and buy a lot of used. And same with Shard. I went over to Shard's little shop and. And I ended up buying two yeah. K worth of shoes. It was yeah. like just in hand and the capability to look and see what you want to pay and mm-hmm. like that cur- uh, interaction is really nice. Yeah, sure. I've only been to a couple shows. I've been to a small one and then in Ann Arbor and then um, I don't really as like the main show I've been to. But there's a lot of up in Ann Arbor, a lot of like pull up into a mall parking lot with a trunk full of shoes and you have like just like 10 Scary dudes shit. yeah just 10 that. or 15 dudes come up to your car and be like yo let me get that one yeah so like, yeah but i i do a lot of that and then like he said stores are great because sometimes there's some really good steals in here and so we go we come here a lot and then we go to shard's place a lot so. yeah and there's a store in cincinnati i go to a lot called soul yeah. revival i get i do a lot of a lot of trades a lot of uh like store credit and then trade. I think he does a lot of use, doesn't he? Soul Revival? He yeah. is more 50 50. And they yeah. just opened a store in Fairfax, actually. I saw really? that. That, yeah. that was hot. He's been growing. I was yeah. impressed he did that. Yep. Yeah. There's not many sneaker Brock stores and Justin. where I'm from. There's like one in, there's like maybe one or two from in Ann Arbor area. Yeah. I, the closest one is here, and this is 41 minutes south. Ann Arbor had yeah. a shop not too long ago, and it didn't last. Uh, it was a former vintage pop up. Uh, former okay. Vintage is based in Detroit. Shout out Former Vintage. Yeah, but um, shout out to former vintage. they had a pop-up store last summer that was in Ann Arbor for, I think, like two or three months. That was actually pretty cool. That is cool. Um, there used to be a store at this one mall, um, maybe like 20 minutes from me, but they just didn't have that great of a selection like mm-hmm. at all. I mean, like it was a lot of used shoes and a lot of them were like used outlet shoes ah. and they didn't really have any like good stuff. Like they barely had any easies and maybe like one or two retros. That's but like, tough. yeah. And so like, it's, I think they're still doing business, but I believe that they moved it into like it's a, a warehouse. Yeah, commercial it's a warehouse. You know who he's talking about? I know yeah, exactly who he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get into some shoes maybe. Um, Ooh, so I know we, we were talking about like the different models. Um, <laughs> let's start with these Fire Reds. So yeah. I bought some more Fire Reds today. Uh, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that video, I've done a couple videos in the Fire Reds and like how I believe these are headed up. I had a few pairs of these. Got them for retail. Pretty quick flipped them. I didn't. Th- what I did didn't... you think about them? First thoughts. Oh, I, th- I think it's a. I mean, it's a classic shoe. It's it's beautiful. Did you think they were gonna jump as much as um, they did? No, I thought there was too much stock yeah. for like a for a worthy hold. They did say they made a mil million pairs. Yeah, there's uh, probably not that yeah. many, but it's probably up there. Like there was just a lot of stock on these because I mean, I could I walked into my like local mall that barely gets anything, and these were sitting on the shelves. They were sitting. Yeah, they were sitting, yeah. and so I got like maybe like five pairs of these for retail, and I. Just quick flipped them, but I didn't want to hold these. But they are a stupid clean shoe. I love the color blocking. And you should have watched their earlier YouTube videos about where we're going to invest in holding these. Yeah. See, I disagree with you. <laughs> I thought they were – I really liked them. I was thinking about getting a pair and doing the, the, the distress look. I don't know yeah. if you have seen that image on Instagram. I have seen some. I thought that was pretty cool. But I thought these were going to go up based on the bread fours. As you saw those, those were really sitting maybe like around two fifty round when they came out, and right now they're selling for over four to five. I bought a couple pairs. I've I've been moving them on Goat for pretty much. I bought a size seven men's off a of Kicks and Cuts out of Cuyahoga Falls. Shout out Kicks and Cuts and my <laughs> dude Marv. Him and I do a lot of good business. But I bought a pair of those and I moved them for two ninety off Goat. Mm-hmm. But I think the GS sizes are gonna go oh, yeah, geez. GS a lot higher because the kind of the input value is a lot smaller than what your output value will end up being after all given time but i really liked them even though there's a even though they were sitting yeah. but if you think about it the people the sneaker heads will get their pair and they'll wear them and so like the majority and they that won't happen to like uh like the laser orange that just came out or like just pair or like the lucky greens pairs that aren't really hyped and don't have that og kind of feel to them mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. why these i feel like you're going to do a lot better 
Well, because people are actually wearing them. Yes, yeah. they're not pairs that people are just trying to sit on because they're actually a nice, solid color that doesn't do too um, much. The Nike logo stuff. helps, yeah. and because it's white and it's so hard to keep these clean, everybody wants a fresh pair. So mm -hmm. I mean. Good call, Moose. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm really proud of you. I Thanks. got a few pairs of them when they shock dropped on sneakers. Those went for pretty well because they were early. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. That, was, that was cool. That so would you guys still consider buying them and I holding? Mean, I mean, if I get if for a good price, yeah. I'll but, buy and flip them. I've yeah. been doing that. Yeah, okay. I, I would do that too. If someone hit me up and is like, yo, I just need this pair, I'd be like, okay, cool. I, I do some sourcing like he does too. So if they want, if people want, I know people want them. So if they just let me know, I'll yeah, get Yeah, we want the them. people to hear your guys' opinions yeah. as resellers because yeah. all three of us, or all four of us, all have unique strategies and unique mm -hmm. thoughts of each shoe. So it's curious how, you know, each one thinks of a shoe. Yeah. So speaking of fours, yeah. we have another four that came out this what else past got? weekend. Yeah. See. Uh, it's the Starfish Four for anybody that doesn't. Um, for anybody that doesn't know or isn't familiar with the shoe, like shoe. it's sort of like, uh, I guess I would say the Shattered Backboard 4. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, you have the orange underlay, outsole. The orange you have, underlay. Yeah, right here on the edges of the leather, There's it, it was dyed orange. And then there's also like the black mesh mm -hmm. over top of an orange leather, like yeah. almost like a metallic orange leather mm -hmm. underneath that mesh. Um the tongue has this exposed foam, sort of reminiscent of like the off-white sort of cut. And um, this was a women's release, but it is an extended size. So they made up to size 12 women's, nice. which uh, ends up being like, what, 10 and a half men's. They should have made extended sizes on these because I'm a 13 in men's. Yeah. Pairs don't really exist in my size for this. They do not. But, but. but I would cop a personal pair because this is pretty much BG's colors. Right? Pretty much. Because oh, that's right. Orange, black. I mean, it is brown, but it's Well, the pretty black close. with the orange yeah. gives it almost like a tan vibe. Exactly. If you hold that by your shirt, yeah. it looks like, like it. Yeah. And like this is such a – it's kind of subtle, but at, if you look at it from different angles, you notice more things. Like from if I'm looking at it now, it's orange, but if I look at it from, it from far away, it looks black. Mm -hmm. I love that. And also like the exposed like – I don't know if this is piping – if, that, if that's what it's called. He said the underlay, that. I think, yeah. is the best. I love edge. that. Yeah. I I mean, the jump man on the back is fine. It's not a retro, so I'm fine with it. So, not for me, but yeah. yeah. Uh, outsole's clean. Uh, for me, in terms of reselling, I didn't buy any of these um, for retail because they just really aren't going for much. But I probably am going to start buying them and then flipping them because these are going to go up because, I mean, I don't know how limited they were, but they are going to go up at some point. So I definitely will just quick clip for a little bit and then probably start getting a few pairs for as cheap as I can and then holding it for a bit is probably what I do. See, I do not like these at all. <laughs> I don't like them just like because it has that bread four color blocking where it's trying to make a retro Jordan four in the orange colorway, which isn't like I don't like that. And also Nike's doing too many of the same colors back to back. As you saw the Starfish 13s come out yeah. and then also mm -hmm. the the taupe the, the topes the brown ones that are the brown and orange yeah. ones see i like see i like those i might get those for personal but these i just feel like they're doing too much they're dipping from the same they're uh dipping from the same pot too much and that's what's causing their that's kind of what yeezy did and that's why yeezys are kind of not doing as well as they used to because he kept doing the same thing and same weird colorways and same type of colorways as now we know there's 30 different types of browns in the history of shoes. <laughs> yeah just, yeah. But overall, I would not like. Yeah, if someone wants to uh, sell me a pair, I'd buy it. Mm -hmm. But personally, I'm not a big fan of that shoe. Yeah. I'd probably get those for right now, retail or below retail. Because I mean, I I'm just looking at like StockX prices. And they're kind of they'll breaking. probably yeah. do numbers like the mushroom fours that came out, yeah. like the tan black mm -hmm. and white ones. Like yeah, those are going for like three, four hundred right now. Yeah, but that's what they'll probably do after a long time. Yeah. I'm curious how the mesh is gonna last. After uh, some years of wear, of yeah. wear, I wonder if someone how will it cut is. out the mesh and see how that looks. I'm really big probably fan of someone this has, tongue. yeah, the unfinished tongue, the unfinished tongue, that open tongue. Didn't even, even notice that. It's sexy. Just Nike just doesn't come out with that many fours. So I think that there's a demand for fours. Now, granted, you did just have, you know, the fire red fours came out. These fours came out. We do have those UNC fours that are coming out, in and a those are months. hot. Yeah, I actually pre-ordered. 
quite a number of pair of those of those for both. Those are reasons. I'm a North because Carolina Tar Heels yeah. fan. I have the threes. Mm-hmm. I think I might have to pull the plug and get the fours and maybe yeah. the powder blue ones. Uh, those, those, yeah, those, those four guys, those fours stop. are gonna do numbers because they're so close to the Travis's. Yeah. It's like no, it's, it's so like the, Mo- the it's the Mocha fours. Jordan one of the fours. Yeah. It's pretty much what it is because I mean for me, I got my mochas because I didn't have enough money for the Travis's I'm currently wearing, but then I sold my mochas when I got my Travis's. So, like, <laughs> I mean, it's the same thing. Like, people who don't want to pay for the Travis Scott fours are going to get the UNC fours because yep. they look pretty much the same. And then you got the topes coming out, which look like the Travis Scott I olive like ones. Topes. I love the topes. I really hope I can get a pair, but I've heard that they're kind of limited. So, mm. yeah. But those are those are fire. Those are awesome. See, I'm looking at a different aspect because I'm a North Carolina fan. So I, I grew up looking at all the UNC PEs mm-hmm. and was like, whoa, I want I wish I could get this one. I wish I could get this one. So like the UNC threes came out, which were basically the UNC PEs yeah. just without the Carolina logo on the yeah, tongue. Those are clean. So I got those at the second they came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And it's just clean, smooth colorways. Mm-hmm. Like Jordan's starting to do a lot better colorways, but I think they're doing too many fours. So that's this is like the f- like f- one of the four fours that come out within a span of two months or something like that. So like, m- but before maybe- that, I mean, how it many was, runs? It wasn't dry think of, run. It was dry for a little while. It's like with the ones I've noticed they've come out with a lot of year or a lot of uh, pairs over the past couple years, mm-hmm. and it Tons. seems like they're still selling out. I mean, See, yeah, I think they need to do time. more 11s. They don't have, they have, like, there hasn't been that. a new pair of 11s that hasn't been a re release in so long. Like the Jubilees, and that was the first time since. And that was. They drop them every year. winter. Yeah. yeah. They only do high tops they in the winter. They only do one Jordan one high a year. And yep. I, they need more because it's, so. it's, cl- it's such a clean shoe to me. They I mean, make a million every year at the end of the year. It's a holiday shoe. Everybody knows mm-hmm. to get them. And. I like that. Yeah. It's so like limited. Yeah. Or this year's the bread coming out re-releasing, or it's the Concord. I mean, they've been mm-hmm. having hit after hit after hit with the eleven. And if they overdid that market, I think the eleven was the Jordan. But yeah, yeah I, mean, I grew up liking the elevens. Yeah. But one thing Nike's doing is they're doing too many like alternate. Like they all grape home yeah. and away, and yeah. they just made the alternate grape much. fives. Mm-hmm. Like that would be a good. Like I love the color of that. Just maybe change the name and kind of get new branding. They keep taking the same branding and just keeps adding on. Like the Shattered Backboard 3.0s, like you said earlier. The Pine Grade 2.0s just came out. Core Purple 2.0s. Purple 2.0s yeah. The fake uh, fragments with the Royal Toes. Like it's just oh, a bunch yeah. of dip. Like, yeah. And they just came out with the uh, Green Apple 5s, but look just like the Oregon 5s, yeah. whatever they're called. Yeah. See, those, I like those. those are, like, that's like the UNC 3s. Like, but here's the problem with, with some, uh, some of the things you're saying because for the consumer's end, if he doesn't get this shoe, when's the next time they're going to release a color like the Shattered Backboards, for example? Great example. They came mm-hmm. out with the 1.0s. You can't touch them for you know so much. So expensive. 2.0. And now 3.0 is getting up there, but yeah. people have different tastes, right? Some people like the uh, that uh, laminate finish, the, uh, the patent leather. Some people mm-hmm. are, are matting it down and doing different things to it. So in the other aspect yeah, it's, it's kind of dipping in the same pot time and time again but they do it in such a way where it's great for the consumer so everybody wears a black and orange shoe or everybody can wear a band mm-hmm. one in a mid or in a low top or in a high top mm-hmm. or in different variations and not pay for the 2016 edition that's mm-hmm. now a rack so yeah, i mean true. there's good and bad so the consumer mm-hmm. yes to the reseller mm-hmm. but what they yeah. could do is they could take certain colorways that are made for a certain model like the hair seven okay and they made it into a hair six like i personally like the hair six because i, I don't like sevens personally mm-hmm. but the thing is it didn't do numbers so like i feel like if they started doing that maybe they'll like maybe do like an aqua like an aqua three or something because aqua eights haven't or like a chrome 11 like they kind of did that with the jubilee but maybe like with that kind of rebranding like the rare rebranding that we never got a re-release of nike yeah. are you listening nike are you listening <laughs> yeah. shout out to nike yeah. and that kind of goes with my thing about the 11s like if you don't like the colorway of the year then you have to wait longer like you do. let's say that i like the breads okay i'll cop the breads yep but then let's say i want another pair of 11s oh wait i hate the jubilees i have to wait another year and then oh wait what if i for some like reason, for some crazy cool reason, I don't like the cool grays. I have to wait another year. But like the cool grays are clean. But like, let's, like <laughs> just for an example, like yeah, yeah, if, right. if I didn't like it, I'd be like, oh my gosh. And then that's two years. Yeah, exactly. Wondering and, what third year is going to be yeah. possible. And then the Concords and like the Space Jams are still going up and they're still expensive. So like to be yeah. fair, though, the reason why you can produce a million bread 11s, for example, 
and they sell out is because they only make one shoe. Yeah, yeah. true, yeah. true. I mean, like, it, I would rather them go deep on pairs that people actually want, like a Bread 11 or a Cool Gray 11, than do more releases in smaller numbers and have, like, a bunch of ones that people are just going to pass on. Mm. Then it comes around time to, to a pair that everybody wants, but there's only 200,000 pairs yeah. produced, and you end up in, like, a mocha scenario where the thing yeah. is selling for double retail uh, you know, right the day the after they yeah. release. Yeah, I'd be mad if they only made up two hundred thousand bread elevens. Yeah. Like, oh. I think they made like two mil or something like that. I think it was a million pairs. Yeah, uh, I have a personal yeah. pair. I know it was a like million them. or more. Yeah. Those but, are what I grew yeah. up wanting to get. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do like the uh, the the Jordan Eleven adapts though. Really, I think those are so ass cool. No, <laughs> they're so cool because like I mean <laughs> that's the fu- like, I mean I don't know if it's the future of footwear, but it's really cool because I love self tying sneakers. My favorite movies back to the future i have the adapt bb mags like it's so cool and that that they finally put it on a jordan is huge i do think technology oh, yeah. will get into shoes yeah. more and more i do i do see that but and it's still kind far, it still mostly looks like an 11 like yeah it's super bulky but yeah. like i don't know i but think they it, use I, a platinum 11 kind yeah. of face and you yeah. know if you know the platinum 11 Probably the worst eleven ever made. Platinum tens. If yeah. they're platinum tens, yeah. oh, if, if so they made bad. if they made like a bread Jordan eleven adapt, yes. I think that would be so cool. I think I that would, would resell. I'd cop on the buy, but like also again, the retail price of five hundred is just it's a lot, man. It's too much. I personally don't like the BBs just because I feel like they're kind of pushing that technology a little too much, and it's not. I mean, the BB mags are cool mm-hmm. because it. It's re- like it, it's all relevant. It's like the yeah. closest you, know, you can get to the to the, the actual max. max. Yeah. yeah, and it's you have the colorway from Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. They're auto lacing. The gimmicky stuff is cool, yeah. but it's yeah. when I feel like when they start, it's almost like when they started doing. Um, you know, they want to put bubbles on everything, like the Air Max Seven Twenties oh, yeah. and the Air, like the Two Seventies when they first came out. Cool, you got React on the front of the sole. Cool. Then you start mm-hmm. putting bubbles on the whole thing. And it just, More to me, it's just, it's not comfortable. It's, it doesn't look that good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's I kind of feel like they're using the same yeah. technology. They're really just mm-hmm. trying to sell people on the technology. You saw, for example, they're doing, uh, what is that technology that they, with the little BBs in it? Oh, oh yeah. the Jorides. The Jorides. The Jorides. But Jorides. I, don't, I don't remember what the actual cushioning is they're called. They're not but using Jorides anymore, I thought, no? So they it produced the so Jorides. many of them that they actually did like the initial Jorides and it was that white. With the uh, green orange. in it, with the orange yeah. and the blue. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they sort of like just kept coming out with them. Now they're sitting in outlets everywhere. I mean, yeah. we were up in, uh, you know, at Great Lakes Heat, Crossing yep. at the Love Great Lakes Crossing Clearance Store. Love Great Lakes Crossing. And I was, we were seeing pairs up there for twenty five dollars. Yeah, Get crazy. out of here! I got my pair from one? Finish Line for fifty bucks, and I think those are so comfortable. That's yeah. a thing. They're one hundred and eighty retail. I almost bought them for retail when they first came out. I did buy them for retail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I'm cool. all about like trying, giving it a chance, trying the new technology, seeing how it, how it, you know, if mm-hmm. if it, if I believe in it or not. I know we've harped on it a couple of times on here, but like the 4D Ooh, the 4D technology so cool. and yeah. that Adidas is yeah. messing with, I'm really like a big advocate for that. Mm-hmm. I think that that stuff is is gonna, mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be the new Ultra Boost. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be replaced mm-hmm. Boost yeah. in terms of uh, comfortability and for runners and how shoes are made. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't they like have like Harley, like ocean plastics woven into some of their shoes. Like, aren't yeah, they, the aren't they like Harley. starting like this whole like push for like putting like fifty percent recycled materials in there? I've heard like those are yeah, like, like you're uh, talking about Nike or talking no Adidas. Adidas. Oh Adidas. 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 I mean yeah. Nike has the space hippie line where they're doing all like the like, Adidas the, the is little actually. Dots they also did the stuff. ones. They, yeah, they're doing oh, yeah, hundred the percent recyclable shoes. Where you could even take yeah. the shoe and throw it in the recycling bin and it'll recycle. The only problem is it's causes so much pollution to even make the shoe. I don't think it's actually the shoe is recyclable. I think that they're actually making it with materials that are recycled. That were recycled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I mean, at the end of the, wouldn't that make it recyclable? Uh, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. they can just grind it up. But I think that when you, when you have like the cottons and the plastics and the rubbers and everything is all together, that stuff's going to end up in a landfill yeah. too. But I, mean, I do think it's a good start. I mean, the space hippies, it looks like they just took like a bunch of like outlet shoes and just put them mm-hmm. into a grinder and then Literally. put some like, some some like sole like put it into like a what is it called uh like a mold a, a mold yes a mold and then just put all like the recycled pebbles yep. in there now have you yeah. ever actually worn that shoe 
I have a pair of slides with the same thing, and it it's an interesting feeling. You tried those space hippies on? Earlier. I did. The space hippies were actually kind of comfy. Okay. I like because like the sock is. They cool. looked ugly on you. I know. That's why I didn't buy them. But um, uh, like, I mean, the pebbles are actually like they're kind of comfy. It's not like a react or Same. even like a boost, but it is. It is like I could walk in them for a day and then be fine with it. Some uh, technology that you guys are forgetting about is one I really like is the split tongue on the Asics. Oh, have you, like the gel yeah. light, like is on the new seen... Shans that they yes, have. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I've always been like stickler for that. And another one I like that's kind of gone away now is the Lunar Lawn inserts with Nike. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. Can, yeah, <laughs> see, all, I think everybody on in the whole world would agree with you. I mean, it was Kobe probably one of the shoes. I Those were my them. favorite. I used to take that the insult. Kobe's that thick zoom insert. Like you ever seen? Those oh, it's before? an insert. It's Lunar Lawn. It's, it's Lunar Lawn. Yeah. yeah. I would take no, them like out and put in other shoes oh, wow. because how comfortable it was. They even in the uh, they did the same thing in the Lebrons. I'm like the nines were insane. So this is that Lebron. Holy crap! Thick that is, Holy and then your bottom is nothing. It's literally on, just that. that is your whole soul. So check that out. I mean, oh my gosh, cool, right? Yeah. See the Kobe. This, the this Kobe is the entire. Like this is, is the like entire that, yeah. midsole right here. Literally, yeah. 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 All the comfort and everything you're getting from Holy getting from that shoe. And you can see through the, the bottoms of these. Right? Like that shows yeah. you it I has did, that straight like board yeah. on the bottom. That's a I got into shoes into twenty eighteen, so <laughs> I don't know a lot about boat. this stuff. You yeah. missed the good Nike. Yeah, I I I wasn't there when like 2010 or anything like that. The Nike basketball is yeah, where I, it was I, at its peak. I've been in this thing for like a year and a half, but this is news to me. This is cool, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. They don't make them like that anymore. Yeah. So they even they, they even put this technology in, um, like Converse when Nike acquired right. Converse. I need a pair of those. Put, yeah, I mean, I have some of those. Even with they I have some making those though, didn't they? They have. They've discontinued them, but they do have Chucks with the fly knit uppers and this. Uh, Lunar Lawn insole insert. That's cool. And when they went on clearance, I bought up as many <laughs> as I could because I'm like, I, I heard that they were discontinuing the technology and I'm like, I need these forever. You got to you gotta send me a picture of those because I might cop them. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. We'll take you with us when you go I mean, we're the same size, so I might fuck Yeah, I can actually bring a couple in. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy one because yeah. I, I love Chucks. That's actually what I wore as a kid. Is I guess that was my first like really sneaker exposure. I wore Chucks from pretty much the age eight to now I'm still wearing them, but like I was God obsessed bless with your them. Heart. Yeah, I'm a flat, I'm a flat foot, or uh, so. Same. I mean, it is actually really comfy for me because it's just, just flat as a board. <laughs> so uh, before we, uh, I guess, close off, since you brought that up, what was your first Jordan you've ever bought for yourself? Uh, first, know? first shoe I bought my for myself was the Easy 350 Statics, okay. but the first Jordan I got, I didn't buy it for myself, but I got for Christmas. Um, to, I think it was last year. I got the Obsidian Jordan One. Shut the front yeah, door. For Christmas. Great first Jordan. Yeah, I paid my my family got them for retail, oh, nice. and so I yeah I got it for Christmas. Um, but the first Jordan I bought myself, I think it might be the ones that I'm wearing right now. Wow, the Jordan One you. Travis Scott highs. Good for you. Jordan One Travis Scott. You, this guy's flexing. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> Me growing up, I was into Ultra Boost and like yeah. the the hype Nike runners, and like I bought the like I got the Jordan Tens, but like I was like, yeah, I don't know, I don't like how these fit. So like right now in my collection, the first pair I could think of that I bought was the UNC threes. I'm a huge mm -hmm. diehard Carolina fan. I have pictures with Roy Williams. I have Dean Smith's autograph. Like it's. Mm -hmm. Like that's probably the first pair I bought myself that was a Jordan, I'd say. And that's a great pair. It I is. Mean, they were hard mm. to get, harder to get than. Uh, hey, I, think I started out on sneakers. Them. Sneakers. I, that's the like the best pair yeah. I've got off sneakers. I had <laughs> I had bots running. I had everything going, and I still took an L. Was so. in was in line at finish line mm. at five a.m. Sneakers. There sneakers. Uh, five a.m. Now yeah. it's you with a pair. I wake sneakers, up like eleven. Sneakers Can't bless me. I'm at the back of the line. Can't so do that. For for a lot of you guys thinking that it's too late to get in the sneaker game, I mean these guys are are just starting no. and they've Never already gained a lot of ground. It's never too never late. Never too late. Never too late. Literally, you can jump in at any moment. You can get out at pretty much any moment. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Literally, I mean, you might need a little bit of capital, maybe even not if you just like have like a, just a mm. few bucks. But like, see, I started off not a lot of capital. Yeah. I started off hit up the Burlington. Just got a Nike contract. There you mm -hmm. go. Uh, yeah. Go to Marshalls, play this closet, like just like TJ Maxx. a bunch of use. <laughs> I'm go I'm telling you, use the way to start mm -hmm. up. And Thrift go stores, for the Thrift yeah. Yeah. that's pawn how shops. I started. Yeah. Pawn yeah. shops, yeah. yeah, yeah. Facebook Marketplace, but Facebook Marketplace is kind of sketchy. Yeah, same with you, can, you can get some weird people on there. 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Meet me over here behind the Kroger. <laughs> your car lights off. I'm like, nah, it doesn't yeah. sound right. No. Yeah. Moose, you want All right. Is there any final thoughts you guys want to leave with us? Or? Um, I just want to say thanks for yeah, letting thanks us come for on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, really love having you guys. Love this place. Sure. And so this was a real honor to be yeah. the first resellers on here. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, just yeah, follow me on Instagram at Coaster Kicks. Yep. Uh, no, sp- no, like periods or underscores yeah we'll go ahead yeah. and put the, we'll put your uh handles both yeah. of you down there and tune in we might have a mystery but i might be buying a mystery box from soul status themselves there might you go. get yeah. a video We're going with work that. On that yeah all right we'll leave the handle yeah. for for chuck's kicks also so you can catch his youtube and, and check that release coming out soon for him uh guys i thank you guys so much i appreciate yeah. you guys coming out and thanks for having time us. In for us this was fun and, and hopefully we get to see you guys here on the channel soon again okay. yeah. yeah if you guys have made it this far in the video <laughs> we really appreciate you for watching it the whole way through go ahead and leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified anytime we drop videos we really appreciate you guys And uh, I'm out of things to say. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you guys. Peace. Peace.